Hi, how are you? I'm laughing because uh, my friend Haley um, is like obsessed with my the way my hair is growing back in. How curly it is. It's hilarious. I'm not sure where she's going. It's just thin hair. And when she gets back from England, I'll let her play with my hair. It's not going to have grown out so much, but. At any rate, uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so it's all about the cats. I got, I have two decks, um, Tarot of the Cat People, which I wanted forever and ever and ever. Gregory Scott, he's a tarot reader. Oh, he doesn't live in England anymore. He's German. I think he lives back in Austria. Well, I don't think he's Austrian. Anyway, lives in Austria now. This is a deck that he used forever, so I've never used this because when did I get, oh, I got this one for myself for Easter. The Easter, yeah, I don't think I've actually ever used this deck, definitely not. I made it in Italy, though. I love that. One time. Um, oh, yeah, so there's these two kind of like blank cards. Ooh, I see some that are upside down. I probably put them away weirdly. I played with these a lot, though, personally, just kind of by myself. Well, earlier in the spring, but I haven't actually ever done a camera reading. I don't know. Maybe I did. Anyway, so this is going to be the reading for um, Wednesday, July 21st. How did the reading resonate with you? Oh, and then the commentary on deck is Spirit Cats. I, those came out definitely. So, and then I was like, oh my God, I have the cat people done. And I'm skipping around. Um, how did um, the energy from the reading yesterday work for you? Like, how did you see that playing out for you? Because remember, tarot isn't... The minute you say never, then that's an absolute. and That goes out the window. I encourage people to look at tarot as a story and as like an, uh, a direction of like how, the, how energy, various energies are being played out and opportunities to work with stuff and to see where the weaknesses are coming up and not, and not to automatically be like, oh my God, because I think there's some, there were some weird things that came up. Oh, I know it was the seven of swords again. No, it was the ten of wands. That's what it was. And, um, but just to kind of see, you know, what we have to work with and that, you know, not necessarily what's working against us, but remember when anything's working against us, it's actually a friend. It's not a foe necessarily you can treat it as a foe and then you're not and then the the, the maximum benefits are not sorry I'm hot flashing um maximum benefits are not actually available to you to work with and to learn from because it's just a learning opportunity right I'm as difficult you know this is something that as is, is a has been a difficulty for me until I became conscious of it and even when I became conscious of it I didn't really understand how to change my attitude about it until probably the past couple of years. Definitely the past couple of years. Not probably yet, but anyway. So when you see these kind of like negative things, it's like, okay, instead of catching your breath and being like, oh crap, I'm I'm doomed, the catastrophizing, queen of, hello, um, yeah. How do we use it as an opportunity for learning? Being in a beginner's mind, being in a learning, learning, um, treating it as a learning opportunity. So, which also, extend that out, was one of the reasons that I used to be really afraid of, like, I love tarot. I loved using it as a tool of, of understanding the energies and art. You know, it's basically using art to meditate. Who doesn't want to do that? <laughs> well, but some people do. I obviously don't. <laughs> so, um, you know, so... Instead of it, you know, being afraid of the stuff that was coming up, which was, I was definitely doing that, and not being able to use this for what, it, you know, use this tool for what it is, now I'm starting to get it, which is exciting. And doing these readings every day is one of the best ways, best ways to get me over that hump. So I, I, I encourage you to play with, you know, tarot cards or whatever it is, you know, to help you meditate. Because not everybody can sit there and, oh, this is just another opportunity, another way, another way in to learning about yourself, learning about the energies around you, and learning how you respond to the world around you. <sighs> anyway, all that PSA aside, 
Thanks for joining me. Again, my name is Lisa Loring. If you want a private reading, my um, direct message me, comment. Um, you can email me directly, lisa.loring at gmail.com. Um, like, share, subscribe. Those are the best ways. And I will put this up on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So whatever platform works for you or whoever you want to share it to. Definitely spread the message if there's something that you think somebody should hear. Because the message, um, you know, even though this is a general reading for the collective consciousness, all, all zodiac star signs, um, whoever hears it, it's there's something here for you, right? Whatever is being channeled, it's for that, you know, if you are chiming in, then you're getting the message. All right, so what are the messages for Wednesday? We've got one that's turning over the moon card ah this came up at the bottom of the deck yesterday and again this is terror of the cat people um who are the authors of this uh karen heikendall is and this is actually a very old deck oh my gosh this one i think came out in the 80s i think it's not a very old deck like you know 1882 i'm so i'm so extra right Ridiculous. Uh, 85, 1985. Yeah. So, cool, cool. So, um, the moon card, this came out um, at the bottom of the deck yesterday. Um, or it came out, yeah, it came out at the bottom of the deck. We're coming up on an Aquarian full moon. So, it's not, you know, come, the unconscious. The commentary on that, you know, that lobster coming up out of the water really continued to stick with me. For a variety of reasons, but mainly, um, you know, for the collective consciousness, it was about, it was kind of like, we, have, you know, those talking about being afraid of things. Let's go back, dial back a little bit into the previous, the earlier part of this conversation. The things that we are afraid of, we are, we make them, you know, they're really lobsters, but we make them into giant sea creatures. Ah, you know what I mean? We do that. And that's that catastrophizing kind of thing, right? So that lobster was pretty, like, it looked pretty, like, it was really like it was coming out of the water, but it was just a little lobster. You know what I mean? So, But these are the things in the subconscious, and the moon card is definitely one of the cards that, um, that is the card that speaks to that. But naturally, we're coming up on a full moon, so that's another reason for that. But, um, you know, so our subconscious, what's in the subconscious, to look at those monsters, what's actually behind them? What's in the shell? What's underneath that shell that we've been constructing? The defensiveness. Defensiveness has been coming up in that Seven of Swords. Remember that Seven of Swords at the beginning of the week? That was a weekly overturn. Go back and listen to the reading for Sunday. Go back into the reading for Sunday. So we have a moon card coming out. Very interesting shaman type of person in this card. I want to look at that a little more closely. Right? Kind of a shaman kind of person. Um, you know, what are the rituals that you celebrate around the full moon? Usually a full moon is a time of letting go of things. So maybe letting go of those fears, those subconscious fears that have been dogging you for like centuries. It could be centuries. Check your past lives. Your past life could be simply from your ch a childhood in this current, in the current incarnation that you are in. For those who believe in reincarnation, um, you know, a past life could be two months ago. Check what your fears are. Check check the patterns. Check the habits that you've been. You know, are you are you just replaying them in your current situation? Because that came up in yesterday's reading as well. The devil. Ha ha ha. So we have two major arcana. Are you just replaying? You know, what is it that you're chained to? What are those patterns? What are those habits that are running you? In the subconscious. Undeniable. Those two cards coming up. The, 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 you know, the temptation to keep staying in the old. The old stuck patterns, not bringing things, you know, what needs to be brought to light. The moon is 
is re reflects the rays of the sun. It is not the sun. You know, although the moon are our emotions, the, the, the emotions are a reflection of the things that our soul is asking for, but they're just a reflection. Dive deeper to learn more about what it is that your spirit is truly wanting. You know, what's the essence? You know, are you clinging to something that, some ideal that really isn't working for you? It's not working for you spiritually? That came up in the cards. Like, have you constructed some kind of facade that, at the end of the day, is not spiritually fulfilling? Is not, you know, we want to move, but, you know, those cards, there were cards that came in further in the deck that we, our spirit is calling for things that are spiritually fulfilling, that are, you know, nourishing us on every level that we're, we, where we're putting, we know, we know where we're putting our energies are definitely in places that um, are nourishing us back and want to nourish us back. Seven of Swords, back again. So the energies for tomorrow are, and I'm going to flip the card, I'm going to turn the camera down now so, um, so you can see these cards and I'll spin the cards around so you can see them spin this down a little bit more. So, um, and then the Page of Swords is here. And the Knight of Cups, Queen of Pentacles, Value. Queen of Wands, Passion, Creative. Okay, so, yeah, let's take a look at what we've got here. So, um, you know, the temptation to Stay in energy, you know, they're, they're the old stories, the and, and to believe stories. I don't know what are the what are the stories that that have been told to you. What are the things that you invested in and believed in that aren't actually even true? That are just keeping you from seeing the truth. And you know, you're merely um just kind of investing in old emotions that are not actually serving. So you know, is, is this the case? And the opportunity is here to definitely do something different. You know, look at what really, you know, t take, forgive me, have the balls to actually, you know, face, you know, to, to maybe go into a be a page of swords kind of person, go in, you know, check in on things, even if you don't even actually know what you're talking about completely, you're just kind of going on in this, the page of swords is a highly, highly intuitive, it's like an indigo person, an indigo child, highly intuitive, speaks truth like nobody's business with basically no filter, have the guts to go in with your emotions, with, you know, with that intuition, with, you know, your emotions to kind of cut the bullshit, essentially. And, and when we do that, this is where we come into, yeah, into this great, you know, queen and queen of pentacles and the queen of wands. We start to make something really, we start to then find something that we can invest in and we can also be more, far more creative with. Instead of, you know, just doing the same old crap, because that's what this is. This is the same old crap. This is you and your own bullshit. And this is, you know, sorry to tell it. I'm, I'm being very page of swordsy here. And I don't, I, I haven't done that in a while. But I'm feeling that energy and I'm like super aggravated. Um, I'm very agitated. But, you know, it's like, you know, take the time to cut in and look at what's really underneath. What is it that you really want? Do you have the guts to actually, you know, look at yourself in the face, look at the dark side of the moon, look at the dark side of yourself. We talked about this, this dark and light thing. And, you know, get out of this kind of energy. Get out of this kind of energy. You know, get into your body. You know, this, 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 um, cat in this, in this card looks entranced. It doesn't even, it looks like he's on drugs or something. He doesn't even, he's not in his body. He's not even on the ground for God's sake. Not grounded whatsoever. So instead, get, get yourself grounded. Just treat yourself as something of value, so much of value that you have the gall, you have the, you have the balls, you have the gall to actually, even if you don't know exactly what you're saying, even if your feelings are kind of all over the map, have the guts to actually put your cards literally on the table 
And at that point, then you start to, you know, you alchemize and you start to create some balance and you start to, you're into a more, far more creative and abundant mode. This is just yuck. Period. I'm not even going to go into any more of that, but we're going to go into the spirit cats. So you, we have the opportunity, and I'm telling you, when this moment of that comes up, choose a different way. Choose the way of royalty is what I'm telling you. And then these women, and, and the, the royalty is being is presented in the feminine aspect. So don't come in, you know, I, I, I encourage you to come in with a an open hand, a receptive to the situation kind of hand, you know. Even if this kind of, even if it's you coming in with this kind of energy, you say, listen, I have these feelings and this, these thoughts, and this is what I need to share, and I don't know what to do with them. You know, come in and have that vulnerability and that openness and that just, the willingness to learn, like we talked about at the beginning. Rather than this, devolving into this kind of energy of, of theft, of draining somebody, of, you know, stuck in your own, in, your, in old stuff, not even bother to investigate what it is that's, you know, that just staying in the dark, being just basically just being hidden and staying in the dark. Like this isn't even a full moon in this card. It's like, it's almost like a waning moon, going into a new moon energy. Going into a dark moon. Stand up. Say your piece. Whatever that might be. If you get the opportunity. Or do something that takes you out of this kind of energy. Even if you don't have the opportunity to say your piece in whatever given situation is that you're trying to move away from. Um, you know, whatever. Liberate. Free your mind. It's actually your mind. And, and it, you know, it's just your mind. You know, it's it is your mind, and that's and I and I can't emphasize that. And I'm, this the swords in this here are are emphasizing that enough for us. It really is a mind thing. It's a mind game. Don't play that mind game with yourself. There's so much opportunity right now that you know where everything is. It's a very fertile time right now. The seeds we are sowing can really bring us just the best kind of energy into our lives, you know, really raise our vibration and she, um, you know, let's see if I can get this back. Uh, and, um, you know, it's something we can do great stuff with what, with whatever endeavor we're, we're trying to apply, we're in whatever endeavor we're trying to apply this energy. So what are the spirit cats? Bliss. Ah, I love this, and this is where this is where we change it all around. Bliss. Here she is. Look at her. See, she's taking time to meditate. This theme keeps coming up, right? Taking the time to center yourself. Meet Camellia. She's in full bloom, radiating delight. When something challenging happens, we often ask ourselves, "What can we learn from this?" Dudes, I don't make this up. <laughs> you saw me shuffle. Camellia is here to remind us not to overlook the possibility that some of life's most poignant lessons come from moments of ecstatic bliss. What makes your body, mind, and soul ring with joy? How can you connect to the golden thread of meaning and let it weave its way through your life? This is an invitation to embrace all that is marvelous in your life. Let bliss overcome you as you bask in the limitless love of a million sunrises. This came up yesterday in the morning affirmations. Let's give you that so you can screenshot that and you know morning affirmations get up in the morning don't turn on your computer don't pick up your phone don't even look at your phone don't even I, I, my phone isn't even in my bedroom my phone is I don't even know where my phone is always it's not even on the floor where I sleep it's in, downstairs off I don't even look at my phone for probably an hour And that has helped me a lot. It was a challenge to learn to do that, but it's improved my life greatly because I take that moment instead to start with gratitude. And some days it's really hard to get there, but I do it anyway, and it makes all the difference. It sets the tone for the day of a, you know, looking at things positively. Sure, we get down in the dumps, but the opportunity is there to, you know, when you have those moments, again, learn from them. 
bliss? What are you grateful for? What can we learn from this situation? How can we help one another learn? How can we be abundant and creative rather than destructive, dark, and just in stuff that this isn't even you anymore? I'm going to leave it at that. Love you guys. Have a great day. Again, like, share, subscribe. If you want a private reading, lisa.loring at gmail.com. Thank you for donations. The um, PayPal and Venmo information will be in the link in the uh, description. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Have a good one.